Okay, so we have to talk about the rank 1 misfortune player. The player is fittingly called Cowgirl MF and currently the best misfortune in Korea. He invented a completely new misfortune playstyle which is just perfect for solo carrying rank games and it's actually so good that other Korean players started to copy it as well. Unique yet effective builds like this usually fly under the radar on stat websites since the majority of players just play the standard suggested builds over and over. But let's see if Mobalytics is any different. Yes, they have reached out to me, and if you're a regular on the channel, you know that I rarely take sponsorship deals because I only want to work with the best, and I'll put Mobalytics to the test right now. So when we click on Champions here, and then on Bot Lane and Misfortune, yeah, we have the standard most popular build right here, of course, but who is this Korean listed as a top player? <laughs> they actually have it. Wow, okay, that's 10 out of 10. Exact rune page, the exact core builds. But keeping you up to date with the latest and most successful strategies is not the only thing Mobilitics can do for you. I jumped into a ranked game right away, and by far the most impressive feature provided by Mobilitics in-game overlay is the summoner spell cooldown tracker. You see, we're playing against an Ash Kaiser lane in this game, but the enemy gets us good here. We get baited into Ash Arrow from out of vision, and Ramus is there to join too, so we end up losing the fight hard. However, Kaisa has used her exhaust and Ash needed to flash, so once the dust has settled, I simply click the summoner spells on the overlay to keep exact track of the cooldowns. This way, you always know when you need to be careful and when you can go for big plays. Summoner spells are a huge deal, and keeping track of them can be the difference between winning or losing a game. The app obviously has a lot more features, but just for the easy summoner spell tracking alone, downloading Mobilitics would already be well worth it. It is a completely free service, so click the link in the video description or in the pinned comment to start playing with Mobilitics right away. But yeah, as you have seen during the sponsored part of the video, if you skipped it, your loss, the Korean rank 1 misfortune player goes for a very peculiar rune page and it is just brilliant. The exact runes are Dark Harvest, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection and Treasure Hunter with Triumph and Coup de Grace secondary. And very important, double adaptive shard, zero attack speed. Looking at this rune page, you can tell right away that Cowgirl MF puts heavy emphasis on the early game. The rune Taste of Blood is strongest during the lane phase, allowing you to trade more favorably, and Coup de Grace is one of the best runes you can have for early all-in fights, giving you an important edge. Triumph is also an interesting choice, and I definitely didn't appreciate this rune enough in the past. While testing the build myself, I was super impressed with how impactful the Triumph Coup de Grace combination truly was, making it super easy to snowball the lane phase with Misfortune's strong early game burst damage. And oh boy do you get rewarded for snowballing! The extra gold from Triumph, and especially Treasure Hunter, gives you access to your lethality items even earlier, and early game lethality has the biggest impact. This, in combination with the bonus AD from Eyeball Collection, allows you to just run away with the game before the enemy even has a chance to catch a break. But of course, the cherry on top is your Keystone Dark Harvest. It is the central piece of the puzzle, granting you even more execute damage in early fights while also rewarding you with scaling damage due to its stacking system. This means that once you get going, there is no stopping you. Win lane, win game. By the way, keep in mind that if you want to have Educational League content like this in your personal feed, all you need to do is click the subscribe button. So for the item build, let me say the most important thing first. With this playstyle, you do not buy boots. Not at all. No tier 1 boots and especially no upgraded boots. The whole point of the build is to snowball your burst damage with lethality, and boots are an inherently defensive purchase, making you safer but weaker. Most champions cannot get away with this. <laughs> Got it. Since they, <laughs> since they also need the movement speed from boots to rotate around the map, but Misfortune has her W passive to do that. But yeah, this means once you get in a fight and the W passive disappears, it is a do or die. There is no disengaging with this build. When you fight, you always have to fully commit. And because of this, the build has a very small margin for error on your part, which means it is very hard to play. Okay, so now that you've been warned, the two core items you rush every single game are Duskblade and Axiom Arc. And now you can also see the second reason this build is definitely not beginner friendly. It comes with zero lifesteal, which means every bad decision you make will be punished hard. 
Your only sources of health regeneration are your starting item Doran's Blade and the little bit of healing from Taste of Blood and Triumph. However, when played correctly, this will be more than enough as you kill your enemies so fast. And Duskblade actually adds another layer of safety. Not only is the extra burst damage great, but the stealth upon takedown goes a long way as well. You just need to kill the squishiest target with your burst, so then you heal from triumph while also going invisible, stopping the other opponents from focusing you. Using the full 1.5 seconds of Duskblade stealth in fights is a big part of your skill expression with this build. Now the second item Axiom Arc is also crucial. I've tested stuff like replacing it with Ghostblade to better account for no boots, or even with Collector for more execute damage and better late game with crit. But the reality is that nothing comes close to the 55 AD, 18 lethality and monstrous 25 ability haste on this item while also refunding your ultimate cooldown directly. Your ult is a massive threat with this playstyle, so having constant access to it puts huge pressure on the enemy. You can actually afford to ult to just kill a single opponent at this point. This way the enemy might even think they could now take a fight when in reality your ult is back up again, then allowing you to wipe the entire team. Your third item is always the last whisper item since this is mathematically the correct sequencing for any lethality build for optimal damage. Now Lord Dom's or Mortal Reminder wouldn't be terrible here and the rank 1 player messes around with them too, but by far the most consistent choice is Cyrilda's Grudge. Yes, it is true that the slow is wasted when you cast your E, but it is still helpful when you have to ult raw while also adding utility to your Qs. However, the big advantage this item has over its alternatives is that it comes with even more ability haste and also 15 extra AD for just 200 extra gold. For comparison, 10 AD would already be worth 350 gold. Now for late game items you are rather flexible as long as you keep stacking lethality, but the most common choices made by the rank 1 player are Edge of Night, so the spell shield protects you while you ult, and then Serpent's Fang and Ghostblade. Serpent's is usually there to counter late game shielding effects like Sterak's Gage or Zeroth's Embrace, but it can be bought earlier if the enemy team have a lot of shielding spells naturally. Man, I could talk about this build all day long, but I should better hurry up and start showing you the actual gameplay analysis, since, again, the build is quite hard to play. So the lane matchup is MF Blitzcrank vs Jin Rakan, and an all-in support like Blitzcrank is of course perfect for such an aggressive early game build. As mentioned, getting an edge in early fights that you can snowball into a massive lead is the entire idea behind the playstyle and the sole reason for every single one of your rune choices. So please have a close look at how the rank 1 player takes full advantage once his support finds an opportunity for the all-in. I thought at multiple points Misfortune just had to go down here, but the interplay of all the tools at her disposal was simply perfect. No other rune page would have enabled her to win that fight. Anyway, as strong as the rune page might be, an important detail you need to keep in mind is that it doesn't have any form of mana regeneration. This is another reason why the build is hard to play and not beginner friendly, since wasting your mana makes you completely useless. While it is okay to aggressively fish for Q-bounces in lane, the rank 1 player always keeps a certain quantity of mana available, so Misfortune will be fully functional in a potential fight. Also, just because the build is heavy all-in focused and thrives in early game chaos, that doesn't mean you would stupidly take every fight possible. In some situations you just have to run preemptively so the enemy doesn't get a free paycheck. Again, the build might be simple mechanically since Misfortune doesn't have any crazy inputs, but choosing when to fight and when not is a huge part of your skill expression. If a situation looks fishy, it most likely is fishy, so you should step away from it. However, the good news is that advantageous situations on the other hand are also pretty easy to detect, even for the relatively untrained eye. And with this build, whenever your support makes a play, you have to follow up with everything you got to make it worth your while.
Once you're committed, you're committed. Even when under attack yourself, you still have to keep pushing forward to get that kill. That's all that matters. Naturally, this cannot work in your favor every single time, and occasionally even the rank 1 player gets baited, since high risk, high reward is what this playstyle is all about. But as long as you are successful at least 50% of the time, you can still snowball and carry. And if you're a veteran ADC player, you most likely know how important it is to maximize your CS in lane so you can scale. Yes, farming when you can is still important, but with this early game misfortune style, you always want to roam and join fights in the jungle, even if that means missing CS. These fights are your best opportunity to snowball even harder. Sure, you might die, but just trading one for one will be advantageous for you, and more often than not, your team gets even more kills out of the deal. A rule of thumb that holds true in most cases is that an AD carry should stay in lane as long as both bot lane towers are still standing. However, as you can see, Cowgirl MF breaks this rule quite frequently once the team starts to make plays around the map. What you miss in terms of CS will be compensated for with kill participation and treasure hunter stacks. But this is also why this build is so good in solo queue. You thrive when things get messy, whereas the enemy team gets tilted when the early game is not in their favor. However, one ADC habit that you still want to employ with this playstyle is hovering the mid lane when laning phase is definitely over. Mid lane will always be closest to whatever happens anywhere on the map, so you are quick to join the fray. And while your single target burst damage is mostly Q auto with dust bit proc, your most important team fighting tool is of course your ultimate. Please pay close attention to the enemy Z. Yeah, Z tried to assassinate Misfortune, but since you kill your targets so quickly, you enter stealth before the enemy can click on you. Don't underestimate Duskblade's utility. Now, once you have the upper hand, it is super important to actually make progress on the map. You will get outscaled eventually, so you gotta strike the iron while it's still hot, which in this case of course means you gotta convert kills into objectives as efficiently as possible. And while you might think that an AD carry without any attack speed would be not as helpful when attacking towers, you have to keep in mind that lethality affects towers as well. Especially with your W attack speed steroid, this allows Misfortune to push very efficiently. But let's talk a little bit more about Misfortune's ult usage. Because it is very easy to fall into the trap of only thinking about the huge AoE team wipes, when in reality you will more often than not just use it to follow up from safe range. You should be very trigger happy, even if you only hit one single target with this big spell. You have all that ability haste for a reason after all, and even if just one key target got removed by your ult, you can then snowball the rest of the fight with numbers advantage. But I mean, who am I kidding? We are talking about a full lethality one-shot misfortune build with all the burst damage you could ever ask for. It would be almost sadistic of me to not show you at least one setup for a massive, game-winning, teamfight-destroying full build bullet time. After all, the build is not just highly effective, but also extremely satisfying to pull off. But before you try it for yourselves, remember that your plays during the lane phase are most important if you want to make it work. So I recommend that after you've downloaded the Mobilytics app to take advantage of cooldown tracking, you better also refresh your lane phase knowledge by clicking the guide on your screen right there. 